We are coming live again from day two here at Advancing Prefab, and I'm joined by two guys from Windover Construction. Welcome to the show. Uh, thanks for, for coming. Thank you so much. Thank Super you excited. Can, let's start by introducing kind of who you are and what brought you to Advancing Prefab. Go ahead. Go ahead. Uh, Stuart Muir, um, President and CEO of Windover. As you mentioned, we've been here for four years, and uh, what brought us here is um, really the sharing of ideas meeting other partners that are thinking about innovation, thinking about really changing our industry, industrialized construction So it's, We really enjoyed the, the, all of our time since we've been here. Yeah, nice. Uh, Amar Rafat uh, from Moldova Construction, a CIO, Chief Innova Innovation Officer. Uh, we focus a lot <laughs> on uh, innovative solutions uh, that uh, supporting prefabrication and modular construction. We're excited to discuss this with you uh, today, Todd. Thank you for having us. Yeah, absolutely. So. Uh, Coming kind of halfway through day two, official day two yeah. of Advancing Prefab, what is standing out as um, uh, kind of things that, to take back home? It's, it's amazing the passion that everyone has here for prefabrication, offsite construction, and the discussions around all the different solutions. We this awareness within the industry is really great to see, and it's great to see that the numbers in, in the conference is really it's it's getting more and more folks interested in the in the topic. So it's great to see that. Yeah, yeah I, I think my takeaway was with Amy, um, Amy's remarks uh, yesterday, really talking about expected experiences. Mm -hmm. We've always talked about that. We always know it, it's underlying. We try to be efficient, cost effective, but really uh, trying to understand how workflows can be improved. And, um, and I loved her example of uh, ordering pizzas more, more of uh, an expected experience than it is uh, in anything in construction. So we want to change that. Yeah, absolutely. I, I love when Amy starts talking about expected experience because it's, it's such a, a, a great kind of easy nugget to, to put in your mind that there's so much stuff that we demand and just expect in our personal lives. But for some reason, it's not translating into the construction industry. We put up with so much stuff that we would never tolerate in our personal life. How are you guys at, at Windover helping to kind of change that expected experience. So, so our work with innovative solutions, with laser scanning, BEM, and our in-house expertise with our great supers who are very specialized in how to build the modular and prefab. Mm -hmm. Our goal is to mitigate risk and making sure there are no surprises on site. Mm -hmm. So we make sure that we detect any discrepancies early on in the pre-con or even on site through QAQC. So the goal is to have no surprises on site and mitigate risk early on to set those ex expectations. Yes, and, and so that's how we're implementing some of these solutions so that we don't have surprises on site, but even going further back during pre-construction and working with our, not only our clients, but our design partners. We, uh, intern we have an internal person and in she's just concentrating on ops, mm -hmm. ops improvement and continuous improvement when it comes to that. So not only are we looking at our processes within our organization, but we're trying to figure out how we can be more effective with our design partners, because we do a lot of design build work also. Mm -hmm. So that's what we've been looking at and, and trying to improve upon every day. Yeah, interesting. How have you guys won over some of the, the skeptics along the way or maybe kind of getting over some of the, the bumps along the yeah. process? A great example of that would be, uh, is a multi-family uh, building in Canvas in uh, north of Boston, in Beverly, Mass. It won the Global EEC Excellence Award for Autodesk. Uh, the, the way we did that is, at most of the prefab and modular projects, the on-site components not necessarily align well with prefab uh, objects in, or elements in the factory. So what we did is that we did constant, regular QAQC laser scans and drone LiDAR surveys with ground control points to make sure we communicating in real time what's built on site versus what's being built in the factory. So we make sure that when those elements arrive on site, they're gonna fit perf perfectly with all the MEB shelves. And that's uh, becoming a standard for our processes in construction. Yeah, I think the other, the other uh, component to this is we embraced technology about five or six years ago, like really embraced it. Um, and Amr has been the driver of that force within our organization. And all of our teams come to the VDC group now for solutions. They're looking for opportunities. It's almost like a challenge. They want to see how we can utilize what either what the tools or technology that we have to, to solve those, those problems. But I think the other big thing is we've embraced technology that it's not just at the beginning of a project to win a project and the fanciness and the nice pictures and the rendering, things like that, really utilizing it through the whole cycle of a, pro of a project. All the way through post, um, we're even utilizing it for uh, post-occupancy commissioning and, and re working with the live model. 
Yeah. So that's a huge kind of cultural shift and yeah. undertaking that, that I'm sure you guys did five years ago to, to really pull on and embrace that. Yeah. What was that? What was that process like? Was the people super resistant or were people kind of on board? The, the beauty, actually, the, the beauty of the culture at Wendover is that the, when you go to all our supervisors and project managers and you tell them we're going to get that approach, it's a leading edge new approach, mm -hmm. whether it's uh, for laser scanning or drone surveys or autodesk takeoff, quantity takeoff model, based even with estimating teams, they embrace it mm -hmm. and say, yes, we're going to try. And uh, we actually don't just talk about it, it's showing by doing. Mm -hmm. So we start small, example, when it works and successful, we keep building upon it. I would say that's where we are today, but it's been a journey. Yeah. And I would say, uh, looking back, um, yeah, there's always skeptics. There are people that will embrace it, and, and we, you know, there was a mix, um, mixed cross, mix cross section in our organization, but particularly out in the field, the field so, and the support teams, they were a little skeptical until the first time that we went on and. Um, scanned one of our sites with all the undergrounds prior to uh, um, putting down and, and placing our slab, overlaid the model, the coordinated model, understood that there was maybe a couple conflicts, they weren't going to come up into walls. So it's pretty easy to understand when you're moving pipes with a shovel versus a jackhammer that there's something that's a little more effective there. <laughs> right. And it, that it was literally, it was like all phones across the whole organization were ringing in the field. Everyone's like, you got to believe, I can't believe this, but it really worked. Yeah. And then sure enough, when the panels came, landed on site, everything fit like a glove. It was, uh, it was, it's good to see. But that was a little bit of a, uh, of a journey for us to get to the point right now of embracement. Yeah, did you see uh, the, the light bulb kind of going off yeah. when they were looking at it like, oh, that's why yeah. we do this. It's a mind yeah. reset shift. So yeah, it's yeah, redefining sure. what is possible in the industry. Yeah. And to still at point, we take this across the life, the whole life cycle of the project mm -hmm. until we even deliver the project. We actually right now collaborating with Autodesk to deliver the digital twin mm -hmm. to clients. Yeah. And the clients really love it. We piloted that in a Philips Exeter uh, Academy yeah. project. We deliver, it's really transforming the way we hand over projects to clients mm -hmm. through giving them all this information, rich data that was accumulated through coordination. It carries over. It doesn't make sense that we stop there. We deliver it to the client as he can use it many years to come to support their future facility maintenance. Mm -hmm. So that's something also we're excited about that we carry over to support owners in an innovative way. Yeah. For sure. I'm super uh, intrigued by Digital Twin and mm -hmm. the potential there. From your point of view, what do you see is, is really the kind of the untapped potential of Digital Twins? Well, I think right now we're utilizing it um, with um, phallogram lenses and we're utilizing it with some of our, our field teams. Okay. It's not fully integrated in our company yet, but when you can have a superintendent or field staff walk through a site with, with, their, uh, with the model, and be able to understand where there's going to be conflicts mm -hmm. prior to a you know, fully coordinated model, prior to it going in, and again, trying to avoid those surprises. So that, that to us is one of the first steps. Also clients were, uh, what clients li liked, uh, like for the example of Philips Extra Academy, that they give access to that digital twin model to all their on-site mm. facility folks. Mm -hmm. So in their iPads or their, uh, at the fingertips of their offices, they can uh, they have this information rich data model that they can give them all details about manufacturer information, installation date, and it's a living document. Ten years from now, if they replace a, an equipment, they can still update it and add, plug in those data. So we're giving them basically something that will continue to support them for years to come. Mm -hmm. What do you think is, is really possible if we look out ten years as construction as a whole at large for the industry? What's possible? What does the landscape really look like? This is why I'm intrigued coming here. Um, Off-site or industrialized construction is absolutely has to be a part of it, mm -hmm. and and it's the integration. And we always, everyone's been talking about it for a while, but it's really making sure that the integration of your design at the, the forefront with the client, um, all the way from a program and client standpoint, mm -hmm. with our design partners and our trade partners and our manufacturing partners, mm -hmm. that that was one continuous flow of information that does not have any gaps. And redundancy too. There's probably more redundancy than there is gaps. Want to yeah. make that efficient? Yeah. And it's more of a connected construction. So we ca it's all about the data and how we utilize it throughout the process. So the more we have, I, I think the future will be a combination of the digital twin data at the end of the project, the QAQC in the middle of the project while we build it, the good pre-con mm -hmm. model-based estimates and all this good planning for prefab early on in the process. 
uh, and sustainability studies, all this when gets connected and carry over from a step to step without losing data, which uh, our new technologies can allow the ca data to be carried over because we are building at the end of the day a 3D building. We got to build it from a 3D data, not necessarily from a 2D data. It doesn't make sense. So yeah. that's uh, the future of construction, more connected, more data carrying over from where the architect sketch build the model throughout the client using it for many years to come. And being construction managers, we, you know, we also have to bring in the costs, right? And the scheduling. But having that be a part of this so that our databases are, br are bringing that in so that it can be more effective budgeting at the very front, at, uh, at the forefront of a project. Mm -hmm. There's too many projects that go sideways or backwards because of uh, budget constraints, mm -hmm. not being able to hit a certain budget. So we're trying to uh, make that uh, definitely a way that we want to deliver a project in 10 years for certain. Yeah. And then the schedule, because there's always scheduling uh, issues that pop up, particularly right now with um, supply chain. So how can we understand how uh, off-site constructed p p uh, material, how long is it truly going to take through their whole system and their, their um, supply chain to get it onto a job site? Mm -hmm. So on the cost <coughs> side of things, how do you encourage other people to, to get into the, the modular space? Because it's, it's a big yeah. upfront cost and traditionally people are, are so focused on the, the project costs where with modular you have to take that that longer term view because you may not save a bunch of money on your, your first project but you right. realistically you probably won't. How do you encourage them to kind of bite that bullet and maybe tweak their, their mindset on project costs? So what, what I, I, still, uh, I would love to hear from Stuart is a modular component, but also we look at Wendover, a prefab, more holistic view to it. Uh -huh. So we added additive manufacturing, 3D printing, and digital prefabrication to our workflows. For example, we worked on a historic preservation facade, mm -hmm. and we did the exact replica of the facade that was falling apart through digital prefabrication and 3D modeling at the Autodesk Technology Center in Boston, using our fusion models. So waiting for long lead items, you can really overcome those challenges and the shortage of skilled laborers using things like additive manufacturing, which is a big part of the whole advanced, uh, the prefabrication holistic view to it. Mm -hmm. I would love to hear from you. Yeah, 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 prefabrication is, is for every project. Biometric modular might not be for every project. And that's, I think, the heart of your, your question. And, and we look at it and not, it doesn't always fit, doesn't it always work, doesn't always work with the program type, but we do look at it and it's usually there is absolutely a savings so there might be some premiums with the construction uh, costs that can be easily offset of saving three to four months of general conditions or anything to do with the general requirements of the project and another big thing that we talked about yesterday in our presentation was about um, you know we build mostly in the northeast so um, winter and weather <laughs> it's tends, thing there. Tends, <laughs> tends to have some costs related to it. Yeah. And, and we gotta, we're concerned about uh, weather delays. Everyone has weather delays, but we have to shovel snow versus just wait. I mean, right. I understand that heavy rains, there's costs associated with that, but yes, it's, we, we do worry about that. So having the ability to have concurrent cons on-site and off-site construction is usually an advantage that we talk to our clients about. Yeah, no, the weather is a, that's a real thing. Uh, I, I'm in Atlanta, so yeah. we don't have the snow yes. problem, but I was up in, in Montreal a couple weeks ago, it was negative 40. Right. There was snow just everywhere. Yeah. Like, this is a real thing. Construction is totally different <laughs> up here in Montreal versus how we do it, it down in Atlanta. You just have shutdowns. 90 degrees for you know, three months out of the year. Right, right, right. Uh, exactly. From the owner's side of things, uh, where do you see the the momentum swinging for modular from an owner's perspective? I think from an owner's standpoint, um, I think you mentioned earlier about you know skepticism and making mm -hmm. sure that you're getting certain clients to understand what the benefits are. Yeah. Um, when I look, when I think about volumetric modular versus offsite construction or industrial industrialized construction, I, I, when we have clients, we, we constantly will bring them to other projects, and not only can we show them the end product, and they can get over and understand that actually the level of quality is is a higher level can be a higher level of quality than a site built uh, building. Mm -hmm. We just talked about weathering, right? Weathering and water and making things watertight in the circumstances around the trades putting their assemblies together. Um, when you can do it in a factory, we all know that that environment is, is much better. Mm -hmm. So that, that's one example. And I think uh, making sure that they understand that there is a process at the very beginning that they have to make decisions and then they have to pencil down. Mm -hmm. 
that's usually one of the problems that certain institutions that we work with, academic, they always want to continuously make some changes all the way up, even to the point where they walk walking through the site and they go, uh, can I change that door? Well, there's a certain point where pencils are down when it's off-site construction. Right. You know, so. What do you think the biggest uh, misconception is around modular? Maybe from the owner's perspective or just in general? The, the, the expectation is that modular has to be like a shoe box mm. or even... Uh, uh, it's actually, the ugly cement blocks. Yeah, <laughs> right, yeah. right now with all the technology and the uh, uh, comprehensive technology we apply to modular construction, we can really coordinate the most complex geometries, so that gives more freedom for architects who work, our design teams who we would love to work with, mm -hmm. is to give them flexibility to design. We have one of the projects at Endicott College that if you look at it, you will never think this is modular. It's yeah. so beautiful to the, yeah. That's right, yeah, the site components, and but most of it's a modular uh, project, it was a dormitory. So then, yeah, so our, the use of technology can really give architects and design teams the flexibility. Also a part of the, how we help with clients to embrace prefab overall in general uh, is uh, like, for example, we created a thousand roof truss, 935 roof trusses in 15 hours using HOEC technologies. So technology like this can provide substantial time and cost savings mm. when you look at it differently. So showing, that's why we like to apply this new technology in real projects with schedule mm. and test how it will really provide value for the clients. It's all solution based mm. to overcome challenges. Yeah. How are you going about that education to knock down those misconceptions? Well, we, t we actually just talked about it here at the conference about how these case studies or having these individual opportunities to find these solutions that are, are new with new technology. It just takes a couple for people to get the confidence. Yeah. And that's really what it takes. And then, then we can all collectively launch. And when I say that, I mean, I'm talking about all the other CMs that we're all utilizing technology and we're all really trying to improve our industry, which is needs, needs a little bit of improvement. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Uh, so one of our kind of core uh, tenets of the show is around innovation. What does innovation mean to you? Mm. Well, innovation is to redefine constantly what is possible to advance our industry and provide value for the client. So at Wendover, for example, our mindset, whether it's in the VDC team or field team or project management, as we work together as one team in harmony, it's all about solution-based. When uh, there is a challenge, constant communication between field and the uh, VDC team, so that innovation carries over throughout the, uh, the, the, the company mm -hmm. with everyone. Um, the way we push that is through constant communication. If there is a challenge on the job site, we sit together, and we have all these different beautiful technologies that we can be combined to over a solution to overcome a challenge. Not only to use the uh, technology to be cool or to, uh, but it's it's always whether saving time, mm -hmm. mitigating a risk, solving a problem before even it becomes a problem, mm -hmm. or providing value for the clients that they can use many years to come, like the digital twin and the models or things like that. That's innovation in my opinion. Yeah, and we're talking about uh, innovation on the con, uh, the con ops side of, of our business, but it's one of our organizational um, goals, in, and it's a mindset, Yeah, right? It's sure. a mindset, and breaking the status quo, we encourage everybody from accounting staff, anybody throughout our organization, they really start to need to think about their processes, how they're doing their day to day, and make sure that we're just not going down that road just because we've gone down that road for so many years. So mm -hmm. that's what we're pushing it across the organization, and that's what I'm real excited about. So I'm seeing it at all different facets, not just in the, in the cool stuff out in the field. Yeah, yeah, yeah so that mindset shift, I, I think that's a huge critical component to it, of changing the, the, the dreaded phrase, we've always done it this way. And yeah, Just right. eradicating that from <laughs> right. our, our lexicon uh, and creating the, the cultural of, no, we're going to try it and attempt it. It may not work, but we're going to learn from yeah. why it didn't work and move forward with it. And you're, really, you learn probably more from failure. Absolutely. <laughs> when you're trying to innovate something, that's going to tell you a ton. One of our core values at Wendover is take intelligent risks. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So we learn by doing. So we, yeah. that's why I love that how we embrace technology in the field, for example, because you do it, you learn from it, next time it's gonna be costing uh, less and it's gonna take us less time. Mm -hmm. So the courage to do that in the field, that's really the key for innovating and keep evolving our industry. Also, the mix between learning from other industries. Mm -hmm. Like uh, yesterday I attended, mm -hmm. uh, like 
Uh, there was a keynote about the auto, uh, uh, how we learned from other industries. Like at Wendover, we, the same technology we use for 4D animations to tell a story of how we're going to build the project is used by Pixar, for example, 3D Studio Max, yeah. to tell a story. We use it to tell a story in our construction. We use software that's used by manufacturing, like Fusion, Inventor, all these different uh, technologies. We apply it for, adi uh, for additive manufacturing. So le applying other technologies it can really end the collaborations with other auto, uh, automotive and uh, robotics uh, and software developers can really push our industry forward. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I appreciate you mentioning that. We Two core values that always come together is drive results collaboratively and take intelligent risks. Feel, you know, all of our folks need to feel empowered mm -hmm. to really step out there and innovate, whatever that, that might be, but, but then also bringing it back so that we can do it together. But well said, though, uh, Amr, about our approach. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that empowerment is, is, is huge of giving the, the, the freedom to go mm -hmm. and take those risks. And yeah. on the technology side, you know, companies like Autodesk, I, I think, are doing really awesome work because they, they have their uh, such a wide reach from entertainment to manufacturing that those technologies and the software is it, really starting to, to merge. Those lines are, are getting real blurry between yeah. <laughs> Inventor to, to Revit, you know, and even going into the, the media and entertainment side for sure, yeah. um, which is cool to see. I think that's definitely where the, the future is is headed. Mm -hmm. It's just a, a, a merger of, of everything. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, platform. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Uh, so how do people find out more information and connect with you guys? So, um, you know, basically, um, you know, windover.com Windover if that's what you're looking for. But, you know, we, we do a lot of work not only in the, in the Northeast or in New England, mm -hmm. we're really starting to have a lot of geographical reach. We have, and not only are we bricks and mortar with Windover uh, construction, but we also have a platform called IDEA. And that's really how we, we, we found that we were supporting our own teams and our own projects with all of our techno technology and our um, VDC group. Mm -hmm. We had so many of our design partners or clients or even trade partners are coming to us and say, oh, can we do that? Can we do that on our job? Even though yeah. that Windover construction wasn't on that project. So we found that we have the ability to go out and work with our with work with peers, work with uh, design partners, and help them. And usually at the beginning of their their projects, which they end up bringing end up coming back to a construction project for us. But it doesn't matter. We're there to help support. Mm -hmm. And you you want to talk a little bit about your project out in uh, in Egypt and Australia? So we've been collaborating with one of the biggest developers, Imar, in uh, in Dubai, and uh, we've been supporting them with uh, cut and fill analysis BEM work. We do also work around the U.S. Uh, in California, in Texas, and yep. uh, uh, in Pennsylvania with, mm -hmm. with using laser scanning, and that's actually extending our leading edge technology to push the industry and support our design partners early on, even before construction starts. Yeah, very cool. That's awesome. Well, final question for you both: If I could give you all construction power, you could snap your fingers and innovate mm -hmm. one aspect of the industry. What would you choose to innovate? If we have one, one to change you one thing, one, magic one wand, thing, yeah. magic wand. Pick carefully. Just one way. That's right. <laughs> uh, uh, that's, you guys can coordinate and get two uh, different uh, aspects of it if you want. <laughs> um, it, 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 it's. Uh, I, I expect that in the very near future, our uh, our fellow and friends in the industry will all embrace the technology. I expect that it's growing. The awareness of uh, mm. the innovative solutions will. I expect it to be even more mm -hmm. uh, these collaborations we uh, also challenges makes uh, opportunities mm -hmm. so we went through COVID and we learned a lot uh, on how we did the schools and partners reached out to Wendover to help them with very quick modular construction to respond to COVID we learned a lot along the way processes mm -hmm. that usually takes a year or six months we were able to condense it to four months to respond to that mm -hmm. so we learned a lot lessons learned as we go and I expect that uh, uh, prefab uh, combined with mixed reality uh, and other technologies we talked about, laser scanning will really help it transform and push the industry forward. Mm -hmm. Nice. My, my thoughts are a little, maybe high, a little bit higher. Um, I think we've talked a lot about how um, the construction industry has not adapted like other industries have. Mm -hmm. And it's, as you mentioned, it's just it's the way we've always done it. So I think what I would like to do is see how we can transform the industry and uh, pick it in 20 years. There's, there's three characteristics of it that always bubble up to me 
of um, the connotation or perception of our industry. One is trustworthy. So transform the industry so it people have trust. It has integrity. Mm -hmm. Another one would be innovative. Okay, we really need to make sure that it's that it's not even a question that construction is in, in an innovative industry. A lot of people question that at this mm -hmm. point. And then the other big thing is in, inclusivity, of people feeling inclusive, mm -hmm. and the, the shift. And it's not just a social uh, shift that I'm talking about. There's a lot of there's a lot of aspects that fall into inclusivity, mm -hmm. but that to me is extremely important. And I, we were talking about it um, just at this conference, right? How we got to change the makeup of our teams, how we got to change the makeup of our design partners, our clients and all come together so that it's it does feel like a complete unit, mm -hmm. a collaborative unit, so. Yeah. Anyway. Yeah, no, more than awesome. agree with that, for sure. I, but I think the, the good news is those conversations are happening, and they're happening more and more frequently, yeah. which is awesome. And even just seeing, looking around the, the room here at Advancing Prefab, there is a lot more diversity than mm -hmm. what there was even, you know, five years ago. Yeah. That, that, that people are kind of, waking up to construction is, is a, there's a great opportunity here mm -hmm. in the industry and construction is waking up that we got to change some things as well to make it a much more inclusive place mm -hmm. as well too even down to simple things like the, what the PPE you're providing out right right so, exactly yeah. exactly awesome well guys thanks so much for taking the time I really thank enjoyed the conversation thank you so great. much well we appreciate thank it you so much thank, thank you so much for what you do too thank yeah. you for thank you Thank you.